Imagine this pirate fish is under threat from overharvesting. It might seem like the best thing we can do is go out, count how many pirate fish there are, count how many we are catching, and then maybe suggest a fishing ban. No harm done, right? But hold on. In reality, these fish are not an isolated species, but part of a dynamic and complex community of organisms interacting with each other and with the structures and processes of their physical environments. In other words, they are part of an ecosystem, and that one fish could impact everything from sand production to coral growth to the abundance of sharks and the economy of a local community. As we have become increasingly aware of the importance of these complex biological and physical relationships, environmental management has shifted from a single species view to creating ecosystem models that account for some of this complexity. Ecosystem models are simplified representations of ecological systems and can range from a simple food web to an ecobath model that allows us to simulate how natural and human-caused changes affect a whole ecosystem. While no model can ever capture all of the variability of our natural systems, they are useful tools to inform management, research and policy on an ecosystem scale, rather than isolating a single species. Ecobath is a popular ecosystem model which offers a static mass balance snapshot of an ecosystem. This means the energy that goes into the ecosystem must be equal to the energy that is produced. It does this by reducing the key species or functional groups to six simple parameters. Biomass, mortality, consumption, diet, fishery harvest, and ecotrophic efficiency. Functional groups are groups of organisms that are taxonomically similar or play a similar role in the ecosystem, such as herbivorous fish and sharks. By estimating how much species eat and how much they produce, we can quantify ecosystems and analyse their trophic flows of production and predation. In this process, researchers become ecosystem accountants, estimating and calculating to make sure the model system adds up, or balancing the books as it were. For instance, we need to make sure there are enough coral in our model to feed the biomass of parrotfish, or that we don't have an excess amount of coral in the system. The master equation of our accounting is that the total production rate of the ecosystem must be equal to predation and fishing mortality, biomass accumulation, net migration of species into and out of the system, and ecotrophic efficiency. But what do these parameters mean, and how can we begin to calculate them as ecosystem accountants? First and most simple, biomass is the weight per area of a particular species, or tons per square kilometre. This is relatively simple to measure by counting and weighing samples collected by methods like nets, transects, or quadrants. Predation mortality is the amount of an organism that is consumed by predators every year. For example, how much coral is eaten by a parrotfish on a yearly basis? This can be estimated by looking at the gut contents of predators or by analysing the isotopes in an animal's tissue to determine what it has been eating. Consumption, or the Q to B ratio, is the food consumption rate of an organism for its biomass, counted as the number of times a group eats its own body weight in a year. This is an important parameter because it quantifies the intensity of predator-prey interactions. You would have eaten at least 50 times your body weight in the past year. A study in the Galapagos Islands found seabirds ate 60 times their body weight, corals ate 15 times their body weight, parrotfish ate 12 times, and sharks only ate 4 times their body weight in a year. This parameter is much harder to measure, but can be estimated by measuring oxygen consumption, aspect ratio of fishtail length, growth rates, and even stomach volume. Production is the amount of new tissue generated by a particular group over the time considered, regardless of whether it survives or not. Production over biomass tells you the rate at which biomass is increasing or decreasing. We don't actually measure production directly, but instead calculate it from the assumption that production over biomass is equal to total mortality, which is death from predation plus death from natural causes. Fisheries harvest can be estimated by assessing the stock in the ecosystem, analysing the reported yearly fishery catch, and estimating the amount of fish that were discarded or poached in the process. Humans are a tricky part of ecosystem models because we are a little bit less predictable than sharks or corals, and our estimations need to take into account tricky questions such as how often fishermen lie about their catch. Finally, ecotrophic efficiency is the proportion of production that is explained by the ecosystem model. This parameter is equal to other mortality, or death from causes not accounted for in our model, like disease, as well as migration and lack of predation on top predators. In other words, we need this parameter to balance our ecosystem equations because we can't measure everything. Top predators that are less preyed upon will have a lower ecotrophic efficiency than species further down the food chain, and migrating animals like birds will have a lower ecotrophic efficiency than corals, which spend their whole life in one place. This is because the production of these groups is not totally consumed within the modelled area. While ideally we could measure all of these parameters for the key species, in reality this isn't practical in terms of time, money or even environmental impact. Instead, some parameters are sampled in the field or in the lab, some values are used from other research, and the resulting model is then adjusted with guesswork to balance the energy going into the system with the energy being produced. While this may seem unscientific, no human-made model can account for the complexity of everything that happens in the natural ecosystem. 
While EcoPath is limited as it does not consider changes over time or space, EcoSim and EcoSpace are extensions of the model that do do this, so we can simulate temporally and spatially dynamic impacts on an ecosystem, such as change fishing pressures and protected areas. But the practical applications of ecosystem models don't stop there. For instance, we can use an ecosystem model to simulate how climate change could affect a coral reef. Let's focus on coral bleaching. When corals die following bleaching events, what becomes of the fish that feed on them, not to mention the rest of the ecosystem? An ecopath with ecosim model of the Caribbean reef ecosystem simulated with an increase in ocean temperature to 31 degrees, coral biomass reduced by 80.9%. This caused an ecosystem phase shift in the model. There was an increase in primary producer biomass such as macroalgae and a decrease in the biomass of small fish, intermediate fish, carnivorous reef fish, herbivorous reef fish, small gobies and sea turtles, all of which are strongly positively associated with live coral cover. In larger fish less closely linked to coral cover, there was a decrease in diversity of functional groups, but an overall increase in biomass. This phase shift would be possible in fully protected reef areas, where larger fish are not harvested, suggesting these protected systems are more resilient to climate change. The reduction in sea turtles and herbivorous fish is particularly significant, as both manage corals and algal cover, and their disappearance from overharvesting or from coral bleaching could lead to further loss of coral and increased macroalgae. This scenario could also be modelled closer to home, in the Great Barrier Reef, where coral cover has halved in the last three decades. As these shifts are occurring all over the world, can you imagine what a global, multi-ecosystem model would tell us right now? As our world undergoes more changes than ever, ecosystem models are needed to integrate biological, physical and human components in order to predict and manage the transforming systems around us. It's an important accounting job, considering the client is our Earth and the currency is our natural systems. When you balance the books like this, it doesn't take long to see it is more than just one fish.